when Hall of Famers are saying, uh, wow, this defense is pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good day. Would you agree? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because I, I saw Warren Sapp before the game and, and said hello to him, and then it was like a crucial part of the game in the fourth quarter, and I just happened to look over my right shoulder and I see Derek Brooks hovering right there, and I was going, what is he doing? I mean, it just caught me so off guard. I just gave him a thumbs you up. Trying to get him in the game? Yeah, right? Brooks, get in there. <laughs> that performance, uh, you, made, you mentioned after the game that, that a few weeks ago, uh, after the Atlanta game, you and uh, Mike Smith had gotten together, and, and, and I'm not sure whether the exact words, kind of dialed it back a little bit terminology-wise or information-wise. And, and let these guys play a little bit more. Kind of explain that in more detail because yeah. it's, it, the results since then have been different. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't really so much me. I mean, just all of our coaches, uh, you know, when we, we had that rough five or six day stretch there where we had the two days, the Thursday night, the Sunday night, neither game went the way we wanted it to, had a couple extra days. You know, we just, on both sides of the ball, we just said, what are we going to, if you keep doing the same stuff, you're going to get the same results. So, you know, how can we, how can we make a few changes? And uh, that's where the whole communication on defense, we said the number one thing is we're not communicating well enough. So if you're not communicating well enough, then uh, the logical thing is scale it back a little, have less, have less things to talk about. Uh, me and my wife do it all the time. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> Keep it simple. So, uh, uh, you know, they, they just, they kind of restructured how they're doing their meetings, is recommitted to, communications and and doing the basic stuff that uh that smitty and our defensive staff believe in i mean it's nothing it's nothing all that tricky it's just uh, playing good solid football and it's allowed our our rush to play a little freer we we, we had to cover tighter i mean the pass rush and the coverage go hand in hand and, and we weren't all the time and we've done a great job since then and then you know just like anything else when when you have positive results it tends to feed on itself Confidence is brewing on both sides of the football. Offensively, there, there's big plays happening, good plays happening. A couple of games now. The last week in Kansas City was more of a red zone thing, but now it's it's uh, just trying to finish drives. Are you seeing something that's preventing drives, or are you, are you just playing some good defenses here? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we played two really good defenses, yeah. and uh, you know, you know, you know what's there. I mean, because we came out smoking. I mean, we those first two drives, I mean, I thought it was going to be 48 to nothing, you know, after the way we started the game. And I don't think I've been in a game in a long time where we started that good and scored boom, 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 just like that in those first two drives and then got shut out the rest of the way. Uh, when, you, when you look at the tape today, we had a lot of chances. Uh, you know, we were saying there, there was a lot of meat left on the bone. And part of it is Seattle's got a good defense. And uh, even though we did some good things, you know, we just made some crucial mistakes. I mean, you can't. Uh, we're, we're driving the ball. We're, we're really moving the line of scrimmage. Our offensive line had taken control, and we fumble. Uh, Levante makes a big play. We get down there. Uh, we, we have a penalty that takes away a touchdown. I mean, either one of those, one more score, that game's over. And you, you kind of tend to forget that it was a two-score game. I was maybe a little bit too conservative play calling because we were, we were wide open in those first two drives. And then, you know, you got that lead. The D's playing good. Uh, maybe maybe a little too conservative, but every game, you know, every game takes on its own uh, path. And, uh, you know, the way the crowd was, the way our D was playing, the way our punt team was keeping them pinned back. I think uh, Brian Anger and our punt team pinned them inside the 20 either four or five times last night. So, hey, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take a bunch more just like it if we have to. I know you don't want to do it all the time, but it, it seemed to feel different after the, the interception. I know it's a, a, a play. I'm sure you and Jameis had discussions right away after it, but uh, it did seem like, okay, fine, let's just go play defense here, and, and the whole building felt that way. Well, it just it didn't need to be that way. You know, we had a, we had a field goal in the bag, and uh, uh, when we scored on the third and ten and then we got the penalty to take us back, I mean, it, you know, we shouldn't, have to, we shouldn't have to just say we're going to run it up the middle and play give up football in order to get a field goal kicked. We should be able to call anything with a shot at the end zone, and if it's not there, check it down. I didn't need to say anything to Jameis. I mean, Jameis was furious with himself, and that's just part of the, that's part of the learning process. Sometimes when you're in that learning process, you don't have the benefit of a stout defense uh, picking you up like we did last night. And, you know, we got, we got to remember, at the end of every game, 
we could pick it apart a million different ways, but there's only one stat that matters, and that's, that's the final score. And the Bucks were they were on top on that one, as I recall. <laughs> You've had a few players now on your team, and like any organization, uh, you're going to have uh, family issues, loss, uh, loss of a parent. Alteron Werner obviously is going through that. Um, playing football, is it therapeutic for people going through, through tragedy, or is there a worry that can he perform uh, he's doing something that's very courageous here, but, uh, you know, does everybody need to be pick him up around him so he can go out there and actually perform as well? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, personally, I've only been an observer in situations like that. I haven't gone through that myself, so I, I, can't, I can't comment. But what did come about, you know, that was evident that we've had multiple guys lose somebody close to them uh, recently. I mean, it was Quan, Quan's brother last year. Uh, Alteron lost his father the day after Thanksgiving. Kevin Panfield lost his mother during the preseason. Uh, Levante David lost his mother during OTAs. And, uh, you know, these are young men. And it, w it was emotional in our locker room before the game. It was emotional on the field right before the coin toss when Alteron went out for the flip. When he got that interception, our bench exploded from behind me. In fact, I, I was nervous that we were going to get a celebration penalty for the wrong reason, you know. And it wasn't, they weren't celebrating the interception. They were celebrating Alteron uh, and what he was going through and then making a play like that in the game. And, you know, football's a game, and we're talking about life issues here that a lot of people watching have, have gone through similar things. And, uh, you know, it was... It was touching to, to see the guys react the way they did. Yeah, last question on the same lines, dude. When young men see one of their peers going through this, I mean, it kind of puts themselves, I guess, into their shoes. Uh, can a group come together in that sense? I mean, we're, we're just trying to play a football game, but it, it, it brings life you know, right smack in the face of everyone. Yeah, it, it, uh, it really is. It's a, it's a reality check for sure. And, uh, you know, really, really proud of our guys, the way they – the way they rallied behind the guys that were going through the loss, and uh, you know, our, our our thoughts and prayers still go out to the to Alteron's family. I mean, they still, you know, they still have to have a have a ceremony coming up, and uh, I mean, it's not it's not something that's just here one day and gone the next. I mean, you know, this is just going to be part of us for a while.